this screenplay isn't written by you. Mm. Your first film, uh, Citizen Gangster, Edwin Boyd, was. Why did you decide to take somebody else's material and make Mean Dreams? I'd read other scripts, um, but I didn't feel compelled to make them. When I read Mean Dreams, I couldn't put it down. You know, it really was a page turner. And it was just incredible. It was a thrill ride to read. So I thought, what an amazing challenge that would be to continue that experience for the audience. And I love the freshness of these two young, very mature characters. Uh, and exploring the darker qualities of first love, I just, I, I really, really um, responded to that. What was it about uh, Sophie and Josh that you said that these are going to be my two leads and they will make the characters really sing in this film? So it was very important that we cast two teens that are authentically that age. So Sophie was 15 and Josh was 16 uh, because it's very important for me that they, their bodies be truthful. You know, I didn't want to cast 19-year-olds playing 15, 16-year-olds. They had to be incredibly psychologically mature because the roles were very complex and demanding and Sophie and Josh fulfilled all those uh, qualities. How important was it for the script and in the film and in the editing process to actually spend time with the characters even before the main sort of thriller kind of plot kicks in? Very important to set that up. You know, we had to have them fall in love and feel the innocence of that first love uh, before the plot took over. Uh, and we always wanted to balance uh, plot with uh, character as we went along. And getting the actors to get into a more intense and, and, and sort of violent setting. I mean, I, I look at the scenes with, with, with Bill. How did you get the actors to sort of get there emotionally in those scenes? Bill has some uh, past experience with a character like Wayne. And so it was very important for us that if we we're going to portray alcohol addiction and drug addiction, that we weren't going to um, shy away from it. You know, we wanted to show it in all its brutality. And, uh, and Bill went for it. Shooting some of the scenes from the, the kids' perspective is, is also extremely important for this movie. I look at the crime scene in this movie when, when Josh is in the back of the truck. Shooting something like that is visually stunning. Can you talk about working with Steve Cousins yeah. again and sort of how different this is from your first movie in terms of aesthetic and look? We really um, had the same aesthetic tastes. People would tease us. We even eat the same food. Like, like we, just, we just know what both of us like. So for this, we wanted to explore something that neither of us had done before and keep it very simple, but uh, feel the tension in almost every shot. You know, and balancing uh, light and shadow, uh, the theme of the story, actually. How much goodness is there in the world? How much darkness is there in the world? And what is that balance? the score, it's got a life of its own. Can you talk about you know, what you were looking for in a score that's not a traditional kind of Western type sort of theme? Yeah, uh, working with Ryan Lott, uh, his band name is Sunlux, uh, is extraordinary. He's, a, he's literally a musical genius. And we wanted to do something very different, something fresh, something propulsive. He uh, went on a retreat in Paris actually and spent some time creating all new sounds. So all the sounds in the film are actually completely unique. You took this from my dad? It's a thief, a killer. If you make me chase you, it's gonna get me. What was it about the script that really drew you to these characters? It's this thriller that's, thriller that's really exciting, but underneath it all there's some really good dramatic pieces in it. And uh, I thought the story arc of Jonas was, was really interesting. He kind of starts off as this innocent farmhand and then he meets her, and then what ensues kind of leads him to question his, his preconceived notions of how the world works and morality and right and wrong and all that. And I thought that was a really cool arc to take on. Um, I think I really loved the story to start off because it was based on like two kids and you don't always see that. And I think also the decision that my character is facing between <coughs> choosing her boyfriend or her father, which is family and blood. And I think all those morals and and stuff like that in the story are really important. The scenes that you have between yourself and Bill Paxton are terrifying. I was wondering what you guys have to do to get there emotionally in the scenes and what Bill brings to that character. <laughs> Bill brings a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been hearing that. <laughs> no, I don't think there's a lot of preparation for those scenes that we had to do because Bill just like made it very easy for us because he's quite method. Yeah. So I just, all the scenes where he like shows me on the wall and I'm just like, how far is he going to go? Because he was taking control of the scene, and actually, I, 
had nothing to say. So I mm-hmm. never knew how far he was going to go, and I was actually pretty scared. Bill really commits to those like really physical scenes, which is good because you don't want to do it with someone who's not really as into it or not willing to commit. And uh, he does a really good job of making it look really authentic while still like making sure that there's rules and guidelines and that there's safety and all that. So it was really, really fun to do with him. Can you talk about just you know taking the time to really develop your characters on set? I think it just really came naturally. Yeah. We were really good friends, and we'd spend. I mean, we have all our scenes are pretty much all together. We're living yeah. in the same hotel. We're yeah. traveling together, so we don't really have a choice to be close. And I mean, we already like we were good friends and we right. get along. Yeah, yeah. And what was it like working with uh, Nathan Morlando as as a filmmaker? It was awesome. Nathan is genuinely one of the nicest people. I've ever met, and that's really good to have on a set like this because movies can obviously it's it's very kind of high strung and there's some stress, but he does a really good job at neutralizing all that and making sure that the environment is still fun and, and all that. And he just gives great notes. I mean, he has a very story driven mind. Everything is a metaphor for something, which is great when you're in this business. So it was a lot of fun. Shooting in Northern Ontario, getting the feel for the community and the people that live there was that something that was important for you to sort of get into your characters. I live uh, kind of in the suburbs outside of Houston, so I'm used to kind of the smaller town vibe, and so uh, I was able to get into it in that sense. Mm -hmm. I think I never get used to the cold. uh, Yeah, it looks like a cold movie as well. It is. We were cold, and some days it was raining, and I I remember having like small fits on set, and I was like, Josh, I can't handle this. I'm cold, and it's, I I can't, like, I hate being disgusted, like, Dirty, yeah, and they would put some disgusting <laughs> stuff, yeah, in our yeah. nails and in our in our hair to make it look like we haven't yeah. been washed in like three days, and we just really felt naturally disgusted, yeah. and, and it just like came along it's really cold, easily. wet, and muddy. Yeah, yeah. You think I'm a bad man? I'm tooth fairy compared to what's coming. What was it about Mean Dreams that said, you know, I want to make this movie and I want to be a part of it? It was a complete script. That is to say, it, it, I saw it in my head whole when I read it the first time. You know, I didn't have to go back and say, well, maybe that'll be good. And, that, and the part made sense within the whole. And there was, you know, there was something to do that was fun. And at, you know, at my stage of life, I, I like to think I could be useful and helpful. And I thought I had something to offer that. Uh, I also really liked the director and I liked his first film. I liked his collaboration with Steve Cousins, his cinematographer. They, you know, I'm, I'm a photographer. I, I like composition. I like the way they told stories with the frame that were evocative of so many different things. So I thought, well, in addition to whatever I can bring, they're going to put me in a setting that has a great script that is way more than just a skeleton idea for what's going on, but has huge, you know, human development and, and, and layers of who these people are, you know, it's a delight to be part of that. You, f- you really feel that you're a collaborator, which is what film is, you know. And could you talk a little bit about working with such a younger uh, duo in terms of, of acting, and especially with Josh? Well, he's a, he's a remarkable actor. Um, you know, for one so young, he's so experienced. And what it does for, for those of us who think we're experienced and, and, and have some idea of what to do, it really makes you go back to the drawing board and think, wow, I need to be that simple. I need to be that honest and that willing to do whatever it takes to get this moment right. And then to, at the same time, offer Josh and Sophie whatever wisdom one has from, okay, this is take 35, we haven't got it. maybe we could try this, maybe I could slam you against the car this way, I can take some of the responsibility for the hard acting away uh, and make your life easier. And what about Bill Paxton? Yeah, a, an actor, director, and a writer. And so when I'm working with someone and I don't have any of those other disciplines, I'm in awe of that ability. And it was enormously refreshing for me to find him, first of all, so engaging, so friendly, so helpful, because our director is out looking at the cameras, looking at this and that. He may not have thought to ask for something. I may be too wrapped up and I was going to do this. Oh, this is take three. I better get this right. And out of the back corner of the car, Bill said, hey, you might want to try to shoot me a look here in the mirror because we've got a camera. And I think, yes, of course. Thank you, Bill. I, I, I didn't think of that. And instead of just feeling dumb because I didn't think of that, I go, That's a very generous, very kind thing to do. And so we had a lot of wonderful moments of collaboration like that. What is it about making, you know, these small Canadian films that's still so important and vital to the industry? What you take from Sir Kenneth and John Wu and Lumet and Eastwood and Michael Mann and all those others are great. I've had the pleasure and the good fortune to work with is you bring some of that experience and some of that knowledge 
back to this. And particularly, you know, me and Paxson, we had a moment which was so much fun to do, where we were running out of time, running out of money, and running out of film. It was starting to rain. We, had, we watched the director, at a very sad moment, cut coverage, which limited his storytelling. And he was going to have to do, you know, what would have been five shots in one. And it all had to work. And Paxton and I got together and said, well, if you do this and I do that, hey, I'll do this, you do that, blah, blah, blah. And we both come at acting from rather different mindsets. And with the children, <laughs> the young professionals, we did this thing in one take. And it, it was so extraordinary and so exciting to watch the sum total of all four of our experiences come together in a creative thing. And I could actually see the director, through the raindrops and the wind, smiling and thinking, oh, that was good. That might be in the movie. That's how the cross-pollination of all these things work. You didn't have a plan! I had to get you out of that house.